Welcome to a very exciting episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're going to be discussing all things Starship, including a glimpse at the spectacular future Elon is trying to achieve. And we'll get very excited for SpaceX's upcoming launches. That's right, plural, which includes tomorrow's in-flight abort test. Let's get it on. Okay, to start things off, the test tank for SN1 that was pressurized to failure earlier this month has been taken apart and scrapped. Meanwhile, SpaceX presses on toward the future. Elon tweeted a rare look inside the Boca Chica facilities, where his crew is building SN1's liquid oxygen header tank and nose cone. If you're not familiar with what a header tank is, it's located right here and is used to hold the propellant for landings. SpaceX began building new bulkheads for SN1 as well. The Boca Chica team is definitely keeping busy as they push toward the first Starship flight a couple months from now, especially as the team in Florida keeps sending them gifts. Go Discovery just arrived with more stands and steel for the second delivery in just a matter of weeks. Ever since the Mark 1 vehicle exploded during its own pressure test, East Coast Starship development has been on hold and all efforts have been redirected to Boca Chica. Furthermore, yesterday and today, SpaceX hosted a hiring event for the South Texas site. A lot of cars were spotted parked at the Stargate building, so there must have been a decent turnout. It's not very common for SpaceX to put on something like this, so they must really need the extra hands. But if any of you are ever interested in working for SpaceX, just head on over to their website and you'll always find a ton of openings company-wide. Or if you're a single lady over 20 and have no interest in getting a job, why not marry a billionaire? Mizawa, the first Starship passenger-to-be, is currently single and looking for a moon mate to jump on the first passenger Starship with him. Just head on over to his designated website and apply for love. For a brief moment, I did consider signing up the wife, you know, as a joke, but I figured if she did get chosen, she would definitely go just to get away from me. It's fun to think about the future and all the possibility it holds. Elon just gave us a beautiful glimpse at the future he's trying to build. Starting with building 100 starships a year over 10 years, ultimately leading to three flights a day or about a thousand a year at 100 tons of flight. So that would put about 100,000 people on a path to Mars per year or a million future Martians by 2050. Since the home and transfer window to Mars only opens up about every 26 months, one of those months will be dedicated to sending a fleet of a thousand ships from Earth orbit to Mars. These ships will have been launched into Earth orbit over the course of that two year gap, and that would be an amazing sight to see. Flights will be open to anyone who wants to go with available loans that can be paid off while working on Mars. Obviously, tickets sold would help fund the colonization of Mars, but until then, how will Elon and SpaceX afford this big project? The answer is simple, really. It's Elon Musk, brah and he's doing a great job of it so far. But what we're all currently hyped for is Crew Dragon's in-flight abort test. This week, the booster successfully completed its static fire test out at Pad 39A, has since been mated with the Dragon capsule, and is currently good to go for tomorrow's launch. The four-hour window opens at 8 a.m. Eastern time, but word on the street is they may extend the window because recovery weather is better toward the end of that window. And there is currently a 90% chance overall that the weather will hold out for liftoff. The purpose of the test is to demonstrate Dragon's ability to separate from a Falcon 9 rocket in case of an emergency during ascent. NASA Administrator Bridenstine tweeted his excitement with a photo of first-to-be Dragon astronauts Bob and Doug rehearsing the countdown, although it should be noted they won't be on board for tomorrow's launch. Of course, SpaceX did release another animation showing how things are going to go down, or up, once the rocket reaches max Q, when the speed of the vehicle and the density of the atmosphere produce the most extreme forces on the rocket, Crew Dragon will then ignite its Super Draco thrusters and pull away from the Falcon, at which time the extreme forces will hit the rocket like a brick wall and more likely than not shred it into many little Falcon pieces. And hopefully, Dragon will then jettison his trunk and deploy the drogue chutes that will in turn deploy the four mains before gently splashing down in the Atlantic. It should be quite the show, and one we want to see perform flawlessly so that future delays don't hinder Demo 2. Of course, I will be covering SpaceX's livestream of this majestic event right here on my channel. So keep an eye out for that. I would love for you to join me. Let's watch some parachute porn together. Then just a couple of days later on the 20th, which is Monday, SpaceX is scheduled to launch Starlink 3. What a time to be alive. A very special thank you to my eccentric patrons on Patreon and eccentric members here on YouTube. You complete me. If you're interested in signing up for more eccentric content, there's a join button down below as well as a link in the description. Thank you all so much for tuning in and I'll see you right back here in the morning for the IFA. Until that time, Godspeed.